Wyoming Cowboys, largest crowd they played in front of a season ago. It was about 32,000. It was over 100,000 here, including the legend, Daryl K. Royal. He was there with Miss Edith as honorary captains. And this was a throwback Royal type performance for the Texas Longhorns. But early on, Wyoming starts to move the rock after Texas goes three and out to start the game. It's Brett Smith showing what he can do to Robert Haran, and this kind of set the tone, 16 yards. The Fourth, anticipation, guys, that's what we talked about. Waiting on the receiver. Fourth one now for Wyoming, and Brett Smith decides to keep this one, cuts back, and if it's not for Alex Okafor there, maybe more yards. Yeah, Brett Smith came to play. He said, I don't care if it's a big stadium, 100,000 plus, you're gonna know my name after this game. Third and five, Brandon Miller, two yards. You got a couple more to go. Stuart Williams. Just going to come on, hit the field goal from 33 yards out. That would make it three at nothing. David Ash, Texas, they respond. It's a third and six. Third and long did not treat the Longhorns well last season, but that's a big play to Mike Davis on the scramble. 11 yards first down. Then Malcolm Brown gets rumbling, going to the right side, and Malcolm Brown setting the tone. That's where he got started, and the young man found his rhythm, and he started running the football. Once again, outside, off the tackle, another big play. Donna Hawkins doing yep. a nice job of blocking on the edge. The Juco transfer setting that up. 21 yards down to Wyoming, 23. And then Malcolm Brown will go back to the right side. And look at Mason Walters. He's on the ground getting <laughs> dirty to set that one up. You he, love that when you see linemen <laughs> getting downfield, helping out the running back. So you get it into the red zone, and you turn it over to Joe Bergeron. He cuts back to the right, third and goal. Of course you go for it on fourth down, right? Well, and that play was designed to go left, but they shut it down. Going heavy, and look, Wyoming even gets through, but Bergeron, a nice little shifty move there in the backfield, able to get in for the score, so that's good. One for one with a touchdown in the red zone. Next drive for Wyoming. It's third and six. The Texas defense licks their chops for situations like this. But Robert Herring, Haran running away. Apparently, he put some slip stuff, maybe some Pam on the jersey like back in the day the folks used to do because he goes through two defenders. That's tough to do. This is excellent execution on the part of Wyoming. They knew that Texas was going to be in a three on two, and they, they had a play designed just for that. Nine to seven, 82 yard touchdown strike. Smith just floats it up after Wyoming was pinned at the four yard line, 45 yards. We got a first down, and Smith looking like Brad Smith as Dave Christensen had back in the day at Mizzou. Pressure on second and 12, and there you go. For the first time this season, it's Big Oak, and that's a sack. Guys, this is what I wish they would have brought more of pressure, not giving Brett Smith the time to make those big throws. Third and 20, you're not going to have third and 20. If they gave you third and medium, they're not going to give you third and 20 for a touchdown. So that ends that threat. Texas would get the ball back. So go to Jackson Shipley and make something happen. This is a play we saw time and time again a season ago. Shipley looking to throw. But uh-oh, it's not there. And Shipley says, don't forget about the fact I'm an athlete as well. But watch the blocking downfield, oh. Mason Walters, and then Mike Davis. That was close for Magic. Well, but his head was on the other side, in my opinion, and I think that's <laughs> why the official kept the flag in his pocket. So no Anthony Farah. First attempt from Nick Jordan, 46 yards out. And just a little wide. Yeah. I don't like to hear that, guys. Wide, wide, yeah. wide, left. Put it through the hip. <laughs> right. So hold it good. Seminoles. Don't hook it. Put yeah, it through. Like He's a freshman lay off of him. Hey, this could be the game changer because Wyoming had momentum at that point. It's 9-7, to seven, but Bro, just like that, Vicaro says, give me that momentum back. But then the run after the catch, this guy had one thing in mind, making a play. He knew that was big. Kenny Vaccaro, one of the leaders on this defense. Hey, it's okay because he got the offense to finish. It's second and nine. David Ash on the rope. Now keep in mind, there's a play you did not see where Shipley had a ball bounce off his fingertips. That doesn't happen, so this time, he atones for that. We've seen the playmaking ability of Jordan Shipley. Now we see the hands going out and getting a ball that's probably a little too far in front of him. He says, it's okay, I got it, I want the touchdown. Okay, Kenny Vaccaro says, I got you once on the INT. Wow! That's what he was known for early in his <laughs> career. Take your head off, and he almost does that to Haran. But watch how he runs the lane. The kid was 10 yards deep. Smack him! And like a, a heat-seeking missile. Hey, he where's comes the through Superman? Nice where's play? the Superman swagger? like you saw? Yes, indeed. I think the swagger is in full effect. 
pressure on third and seven. Vaccaro gets in, three Longhorns get a piece, and Carrington Bynum, how as big was that considering there was two mistakes early on for Bynum in this game. It was big because it converted to 14 points. Texas offense scored both times. Give it to Malcolm. Statue of Liberty, how you doing? And again, an offensive line then becomes the lead blocker as Josh Cochran gets downfield and Malcolm Brown's into the red zone. It's a nice job of latching on and driving your legs. We are going wild. It's Joe Bergeron, but DJ Monroe Ooh. getting credit. You can't take down DJ Monroe. <laughs> Don't tell me I'm a track and field guy. I love seeing DJ. DJ take the hit there and said, nothing's going to stop me from getting in the end zone. Pressure, it's 21 to 9. And that punt, well, I don't know if Jordan Hicks got a piece of it, but he apparently did enough to send this one off course. Jordan Hicks had some big plays. That first drive for Wyoming, he makes huge plays on first and third down to set up a field goal instead of a touchdown. There's a strike to Bryant Jackson. Good to see some other young, unproven guys get a grab. Former DB, Nick Jordan. 31 yards, that's more like it. That's how you do Indeed. it. 24 to nine for Texas. So at this point, they close with three straight scoring drives. Every one of those drives starting in Wyoming territory because of some of those turnovers. And that's what we back to work. That's what we saw the offense guys start to settle down, get comfortable, and find their groove. Wasn't that way in the first quarter, but coming into the second half, they seemed a lot more comfortable. Wild again. What did you guys think with the new Joe Bergeron look? Well, I loved it. He ran tough. He was a determined runner tonight, and also the success with the jet sweep set this play up. Mm -hmm. DJ Monroe coming in motion. I love this drive. This was just a disheartening, we're going to try to break your back. Wow, Mike. Yard by yard type of drive. Mike Davis, let go of the foot, please. We need to keep Magic Mike healthy. 12 yards into the red zone, and in the red zone, Malcolm Brown. Look at this. Malcolm Brown had three receptions a season ago. None for Joe Bergeron. Something they're trying to improve. You know what I liked about this drive, guys? Not a lot of trickeration or misdirection. Just give the ball to your playmakers oh. and let them make plays for you. DJ Monroe, put him at fullback. I tell you what, the question mark was his physicality, and he proved today that he can be tough. Another fourth down conversion, and it's another running back converting to pay dirt. Malcolm Brown. That is one heck of a one-two punch that can beat you up in a lot of different ways. Brown and Bergeron both over 100 yards, but Brett Smith started making things happen once again. You heard Manny Diaz say a lot of it was off schedule. Here's a crucial play. It's third and 13. DeMarco Cobbs is called no way for an intentional, a personal foul, I should say. Guys, he was this. at least a yard from the sideline there. This is football. I know you're trying to protect the quarterback. I'm all for that, being a former QB, but you got to let the defense play the game. Did you see Smith get up to and show the referee <laughs> yeah. his arm? Like, <laughs> it really hurt, though. It really hurt. But this is something that Manny Diaz stresses. It doesn't matter. It ends right there. You have an opportunity to get the stop after that. And the bottom line here for Texas and the defense, they did not get the stop as it is Smith finding Haran again. Of course, 22 yards for a touchdown. They go for the two-point conversion, and it is successful. Smith, once again with the strike, it's 31 to 17. How you feeling at this moment, Ahmad? Well, I know that that kid was money throughout that entire time. Yo! Yo! It was turnover free football until that. What happened there, Ahmad? It just looked like he came off to his right, and he couldn't grab a hold of it. But watch how the defense responds. Oh, yeah, they responded. They didn't respond out to the 15-yard foul, but they come back and they respond in this situation. Second and two, they're going end zone, and Adrian Phillips almost has the INT. Don't get anything on third and two. It sets up a fourth and two, and it was time for another defensive back to make a play. Initially, though, it's your big play defensive ends. Jeff Coke gets the first piece. Okafer holds him up, and Michael Thompson, the youngster, gets in for the strip. It is no good. Fourth and two turns into Texas football and Joe Bergeron. Rumble. He had 51 yards Rumble. a year ago. 54. That's a career long. Eat him up. That's what you want to see in your running back. Yards after contact. Keeping the legs up. Keep grinding. Saying it's going to take a few of you to take me down. I want to take this thing to the house. Rough day for my the DB friend, there. <laughs> David Pollock would say yak him after that <laughs> when it comes to the yards after contact. Bergeron again showing he's got the moves. That was reminiscent of the move he made against Kansas a season ago. He just didn't take the forearm and knock somebody over like he did last year. And that was another brilliant block there by Donald Hawkins. I'll say his name again, the Juco paying off, clearing the way for Joe Bergeron. 